102 years ago today, March 1st, Idaho expanded its interracial marriage ban. In 1864, when it was first made part of our territorial laws, it was a crime for a white person to marry anyone of African, Indian, or Chinese descent. Break it, and you could spend two years in prison. Then in 1921, Idaho's state legislature added, quote, Mongolians, Negroes, or mulattoes to the interracial marriage ban, even though the number of people in Idaho who fit that description at the time was fewer than two one-hundredths of a percent. So it seems Idaho has a history of racism and a history of passing unnecessary laws, which many of you have also pointed out this session, like Chuck and Meridian, who texted in to say, Seems Idaho residents would like the legislature to focus on education, health, property tax, jobs, housing, those kind of things. Apparently, though, they think marching militias, silencing youth, women's health issues are more pressing. Or Lori, who asks, why can't the legislature focus on an issue that could benefit literally millions of Idahoans, although there's only 1.8 million of us here, such as property tax relief? Instead, they focus an issue on issues that may benefit or harm a few Idahoans, like the Child Protection Act list goes on and on. We know there are plenty of different property tax bills floating around the legislature right now. So yeah, what about that property tax stuff? We know there are a few of those, again, around the statehouse. Unfortunately, they all seem to have been sunk in committee. Why is that? Well, it's politics. But House Speaker Mike Moyle says they're working toward a compromise with the Senate to bring a bill forward and one that will hopefully sail on through. Here's Andrew Bartline. After more than two decades in the state legislature, House Speaker Mike Moyle knows one thing about tax relief to always be true. The money's coming from somewhere. Remember, it's all tied to that budget. It's all budget driven. Which is why property tax relief has no easy solution for state lawmakers. Property taxes fund local budgets where the state has little to no involvement. The legislature doesn't collect it and we don't spend it. If your taxes are going up, that means the local taxing district's budget's going up. But the people of Idaho say it's now too much. The 2023 Boise State Public Policy Survey shows more than 55% of Idahoans say their property taxes are too high. More than 40% say the state should use part of their $1 billion surplus to offset those costs. The session is talking about property tax. We're going to try to find a solution, and we, I'm sure we will. But you got to remember, it's complicated. How complicated? Well, Speaker Moyle says it's narrowed down to a few bills, and each bill aims to lessen the property tax burden, but in a different way. The first is House Bill 77, proposed by Senator Scott Grow. The bill would subsidize property taxes for homeowners who live in their own home, with 4.5% of the state's sales tax revenue. The second is House Bill 78. It's proposed by Representative Bruce Scott. SCOG aims to index the maximum homeowner's exemption. It means the hotter the housing market, the more property value homeowners can exempt from taxes. But Speaker Moyle has concerns about both of these bills. When you start picking winners and losers is where I start having problems. In my opinion, it should be fair for everybody. It shouldn't be just couched to certain groups. The other two bills are couched to certain taxpaying groups. The money to fund this budget still needs to come from somewhere. So does that shift to income and sales tax? Well, exactly. If you raise the homeowner's exemption, you haven't done anything on the budget, so it shifts. So if you're in a district that's got a lot of ag or commercial to shift it to, you're probably okay. But if you're in a district like a Star, for example, or a Middleton, where there's not a whole lot of commercial or ag to shift it to, guess what? You're paying it. Speaker Moyle co-sponsors a third option, House Bill 79, alongside House Tax and Revenue Committee Chair, Representative Jason Monks. We call it the MM bill, but the MM bill has more stuff in it to address not just homeowners, but everybody else. So we're trying to touch all the bases. The bill would distribute $300 million to Idaho school districts based on attendance. The money is to pay off local bonds, levies, and save for future needs. The bill also increases the maximum homeowner's exemption cap. Everybody in this valley probably has a supplemental on their property tax bill. Monks's bill will pay those down or off depending on how much you have and provide property tax for everybody. But does everybody deserve property tax relief? This graph from the Canyon County Assessor's Office shows the burden of property taxes shifting onto residents over the past five years. So why not shift that burden right back on corporations? Corporations are animals that make money. If I raise your taxes, you're going to raise your costs. You're going to pass those, those costs on to the, to the consumer. It's stupid. Why not do it right the first time and treat everybody the same? Why would we have tax policy that picks winners and losers?
Speaker Moyle says this is politics where some players are sticking to their guns, sort of a my way or the highway type of attitude. And we know the House Tax and Rev Committee printed all three of these bills we talked about on the same day in early February. But since Senator Grow has worked in the Senate to introduce two separate bills himself, and they're all cut from the same cloth, Brian taking mm -hmm. some dollars from state sales tax to um, subsidize um, some of those property taxes. And again, Moyle says he thinks that plays favorites. He'd like to see something that encompasses all property yeah. um, and helps people that way. Okay, so all property, I mean, we talked about this. What does that exactly mean? Well, you think about like a renter, right? If you do the, uh, the homeowner's exemption, that really doesn't do anything to the renter sure. because their landlord doesn't qualify for that homeowner's exemption. Right. So that doesn't stop their rent from increasing along with maybe property tax increases. Okay. If you pay off the local school levies and bonds with state dollars, according to Moyle, well, that should help that person who's renting the property. That should trickle down to the should renter. Should trickle down. Moyle's words were if they're doing the right thing, hopefully it would stop rent from increasing. Of course, landlord by landlord, they would make their own decision. Okay. All right. Thanks, Andrew.